this is especially for a lot of you young people who have Instagram and websites to look at and all these fantastic books on carnivorous plants that have been in print. But 50 years ago, almost 50 years ago, when I was a kid, uh, this particular issue of Famous Monsters magazine is from 1969. I was in the ninth grade and I already had been growing some carnivorous plants for a few years. But ironically, on the cover is uh, the green slime, which was a piece of algae from an asteroid that takes over a spaceship <laughs> and turns into this big crawling monster plant that eats people. Um, but the thing that I wanted to show you, these magazines were from the 1950s to the 1970s. And it was all about, you know, monsters. You know, there's Christopher Lee and vampires and stuff. Uh, of course, Barnabas Collins in the back from Dark Shadows. And you can see how old this thing is. It's practically falling apart. But this is what first got me hooked when I was in about the sixth grade. This is the famous ads that used to appear in all these monster magazines for Venus fly traps. One dollar, and you got a styrofoam pot with some dry peat moss. You got three fly trap rhizomes. Directions were terrible. They mentioned nothing about sunlight or dormancy. They did say to just keep them wet, which I did in December and January when I first got my order on a windowsill that faced north and a few leaves came up and then they just rotted and died. But hell, you know, it was a dollar and <laughs> 45 cents for shipping. <laughs> and you got three of these bulbs. Um, it was f because of this article that my friend Russell in school told me he knew where carnivorous plants grew and he took me to the lake that was right in the middle of town on the Jersey Shore where I lived. And that was where I first saw sundews and purple pitcher plants. And that was it. I became addicted.